Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we will discuss some tips that will help you improve as a wing back. Before we begin, I would like to encourage you all to try out the Econo Coaches Academy courses. Since you get the first 15 days for free, I highly recommend that you give it a shout. This is the best way in order to improve your tactical knowledge of the game. And here is how it works. So you sign up, receive all the content that is available for you, which include a full hour of secrets, these are short videos discussing specific topics of the game, plus 8 hours of online webinars. All of this for free. If this is not enough, you can sign up for the premium membership and get double the amount of content also for free. Now that you have all the content, give yourself enough time to try it out. You can then decide if you want to continue the membership or leave. Keep in mind that if you decide to continue, you will be getting 50% discount at the checkout. So remember to use the code MITSUJR to apply this offer. Now that you stayed for more than the initial free 15 days, you will be getting all all the good stuff ranging from the new weekly content, online training drills, and even private coaching sessions. And that's not it, you can view more details from the link in the description. So give it a try right now and take a step forward towards improving your game. Let's start off by understanding the general positional roles that you have. So basically, you would be playing in a backline of 5 players. During the defensive phase, you need to be as close as possible to the white player from the opposing team. As you know, it is better to keep the defensive line compact, but since you are now playing with 3 center backs, you can move a bit wide to stop any opportunities from the sides. Always try to stop the white player from providing passing options. The more time in which he doesn't own the ball, the better for you. Also, remember that you are marking the white player only. You do not want to follow a certain player if they move inside. Just switch markers and go for the white player again. It's always better to notify your center back when such a thing happens. During the attacking phase, you will want to be positioned beside the right mid and the right back of the opposition. Your main aim is to stretch the defensive system of the opposing team as much as possible as your team will always be trying to fill in the spaces between the lines and look for such passes between the blocks. You need to provide the options on the side while having enough spaces to receive the ball. The next thing you need to do is to convince your teammates to pass the ball to you. This will not happen from the first or the second call. You may be in a perfect position without any markers around you, yet your teammates might not take the risk of launching these through balls inside the penalty area. As you will be playing very wide on the pitch, keep asking for the ball in order to convince your teammates to pass the ball to you. More importantly, convince them to constantly look for you. Once they pass the ball to you, the team will immediately progress forward. Always remember that if this happens say 3 or 4 times in a single match, your teammates will look at you during the build up of every attack. Before we continue, make sure to check out Best Soccer Store if you want cheap and high quality football jerseys. Do not forget to use the code MITSU to get $5 off every $20 at the checkout. Head over to bestsoccerstore.cn Now that you are asking for the ball, try to take the advantage from the blind side of the defenders. Since they will be trying their best to keep their shape and track your teammates, try to perform your runs while they are not looking at you or whenever they are not aware that you will be pushing forward. This can also be done whenever your team will cross the ball inside the box from the other wing. As you can see in this example, Gossens is staying as far as possible from the defenders. But once the ball is crossed inside, he pushes forward to win the second ball if possible. Even though 5 players from Portugal were inside the box, he still managed to get the ball without being marked and scored. 
The goal was cancelled later on for offside, but we get the main concept here. You should always be available if the ball doesn't stop inside the box. You do that by pushing forward and entering the penalty area. Asking for such midfield support is really important. Make sure to ask your teammates or coach to have such a player helping you defensively. As you can see, it will allow you to mark the wide player only without worrying about any other players. This midfielder will also track any movement between you and your center back, which is an area that the opposition will try to attack from a lot. Finally, this midfielder will also help you in such 2 vs 1 situations at the sides where the midfielder will ask you to mark a player while he covers the other one during any overlaps or underlaps. You need to be very close to this wide player yet have enough space to react if he goes for a dribble for example. Keep this short distance and use it in order to transition into the high pressing shape. As you can see, take the advantage from having 3 center backs and push forward to apply that pressure. Finally, always remember that the more you stay on your feet, the better. Make the sliding tackle your last option, so in this case, Gossens pushed the opposition to the edge of the pitch. So he went for a tackle to block the cross since there is not really any sort of danger from that particular area. But if you go for early sliding tackles, your team will be out of shape most of the time and you will create problems for your center backs. There are some other times where you can go for the sliding tackles, just like this clip where Gossens already read the play and expected the pass. While building up you will always want to find yourself in this kind of triangle consisting of you, which in this case is the wing back, with a center back and finally a midfielder. The ball will move between the three of you during the build up of most of the attacks. You may notice how you move forward together to keep this triangle available for the passes under the high pressure. It will all be about the short and quick passes to find any spaces between the block. Your positioning will also be important to create an option for the keeper to get out with the ball under pressure. And once that is done, you will want to concentrate on the spaces between the midfield and defensive lines of the opposition. From that area, you will also try to encourage your teammates to provide the balls on the sides. This will mainly depend on your off the ball movement. You have to create this link with the other wing back on your team, as this will be your go-to pass whenever the opposition is using certain defensive systems, such as the zonal defensive organization. Once they overload one side of the pitch and block all the passing lanes, you will need to cross the ball to the other side or to the other wing back. The more forward you are, the more dangerous these switches will be. And these may sometimes end up being a key behind many of your team's goals. Always try to be positioned as wide as possible. Even if you are in a good position but between a lot of players, your teammates might not want to play a risky pass. You can always move inside whenever the ball is on the other side of the pitch. Try to be available for any second balls in the box. You will not be marked most of the time during these plays as the opposition would be trying to keep a compact defensive line. On the other hand, you are trying to stretch it. Take the full advantage of that and use that space behind the opposition's fullbacks. Your coach may also like the way you are positioned as it is a way to counter the low or medium blocks, and especially the zonal defensive systems. To make things easier for your teammates, Keep enough spaces between you and the closest player from the opposition. This will also help you receive the ball much easier. Just like how we mentioned the importance of the midfield support, exploit these areas whenever the support is not as good as it should be from the opposition, or whenever the midfielder is delaying his movement and following the ball instead. You will then be in a good position to receive the ball inside and around the penalty area.
Another advantage of searching the pitch in that way is creating spaces for your teammates between the midfield and defensive lines of the opposition. Direct passes from the center backs to any forward in that area will count as a huge progression to any attack. Finally, try to look for the instances where your teammates pull your marker inside. Once they fall in that mistake, quickly sprint behind the defensive line and ask for the through ball. Although performing a lot of overlaps and underlaps as a wing back might sound natural and people would think that the opposition might track these down, during the open play situations, you can actually take the advantage. Always look for this area after performing an overlap, as any player who receives the ball between the lines after such a long ball will enjoy a lot of spaces around the penalty area. On the other hand, when your teammate is being heavily marked in that same position, you should always provide a passing option by performing these overlaps. Once you receive the ball, you will then have three options, either a short pass, a cross to the majority of players inside the box, and finally a complete switch to the other side. Keep in mind that when you are inside the box and there are no obvious passing options, it's always preferred to shoot from these positions as a wing back. If you take care of your positioning before receiving the ball, you will always find yourself having more than enough spaces to think about your next decision even after receiving the ball. Either you want to shoot the ball or pass it. But always go for the cross if there is at least one player available inside the box and whenever the angle is not the best for you to shoot. Finally, concentrate on the timing of your movement such that you are always in front of your marker once the cross is played. By this way, you will find yourself in a lot of easy scoring opportunities, just by making sure that you are positioned in front of your marker, once or before your teammate crosses the ball inside. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this analysis. Let me know which position do you want me to do next, and also check out the different positions that are already out from the playlist that is in the description. The positions that are covered already are the fullback, false nine, striker, attacking midfielder and the winger position as well. Do not also forget to join my fantasy league, the link will be in the description as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.